everyone, and welcome to part two of this Avid Essentials course. Uh, this one's going to be going into ingesting different kinds of media. Um, so everything from doing transcodes, consolidating, bringing in transcodes from outside of Avid, of course, linking all the different aspects of that, the plugins and whatnot. Different things to know when you're bringing in audio and still images, stuff like that. So we're going to cover it all, all right? But uh, a couple of things to note before we start. First off, I've been having some technical issues with my camera lately. Um, so I've got it fixed now and I know what it is, but I've managed to record through this entire module twice and both times the camera failed. So you know, you're not going to have the opportunity to look at my beautiful face during this while I explain stuff, but I'm sure you'll manage. Secondly, after recording the video and doing more and more research, I finally figured out um, my microphone EQ balance solution. So in future videos after this one, sound should be a lot better. And the third thing to note, don't worry, we'll get there, is that this ingesting module uh, ended up being way longer than I expected. You know, I had it written out in bullet points and everything I wanted to cover, but then I just kept adding more and more detail and, and just going on and on and on. Um, and the recording ended up being about an hour and 45 minutes. So I had a, a couple of thoughts as to what to do about that, and someone suggested that I edit it down to about half an hour of just the absolute essentials, and then all the extra stuff um, I could maybe put on a video on like a Patreon page or something like that. And I had to think about it, but uh, A, I don't think I'm there yet in terms of paid material, and B, I don't really want to put anything behind a paywall in terms of this course. Uh, so. Um, I decided to just split it into two parts. I think that was, you know, the best thing to do. So this is part one, you know, we'll cover an overview of breaking down linking and um, transcodes, the, you know, the difference between offline and online material, how they're used in Avid, how Avid looks at them. And then the rest, you know, looking at importing audio, dealing with metadata immediately after import, like LUTs and things like that, importing still images. That section will be covered in part two, which will be coming the following week. Um, they'll still be called A102, uh, I think, you know, just part one and part two, because it's the same topic, it's the same module. I'm not gonna make it a whole 103 separate thing. And it's the same record as well. But yeah, that that's, uh, that's enough of an explanation. So let's just get into the video and, you know, we'll get straight to it. Now there's two primary ways of getting stuff into Avid. There's linking, where we are essentially just referencing existing media files outside of Media Composer. We're not transcoding, we're not importing, we're not moving the files, we're just linking to what's already there. And then there's the Avid Media Files consolidating transcoding proxies site. Uh, and so over the course of this video, we're going to do a deep dive into both of them. I'll explain how they work, how you'll use them, how you'll get different media files in. So first off, we're going to take a look at uh, AME linking. So I'm going to link in some media uh, and explain the, the process. Uh, so first off, I've got a bin here. So the first thing to show is Avid's ingest tool, uh, ingest window, um, which is called the source browser. Now, I have this mapped to a key of Shift-I, I for ingest, but you can find it under the File menu, Input, Source Browser. And here it is here. Now, I'll give you a quick tour around this window. I have covered it in other videos, um, but we're going to be using it a lot in this particular um, chapter of this course. Uh, so I'll give you the tour around. Up to our, on the left-hand pane here, we've got our Explorer. Um, so under explore is just your more manual exploring your different volumes and drives. Favorites is ones that you've saved, you know, saved locations. These are all red and offline at the moment because I'm away from home and these are all on my home raid. Um, so they're unavailable right now. And recent is, you know, recently used locations. Uh, we've got a left and a right, so like a back and a, you know, go back and forward and, you know, folders you've been to. Um, you can go up a level in the folder hierarchy. Uh, this one here will jump to your computer's home directory. Uh, this one is to collapse all directories if you've got a bunch of you know folders open. And this will allow you to add or remove um, a selected folder to your favorites. So this is my favorites here. 
So we just navigate to the folder that we want. In this case, I've got my main projects folder on my temporary drive here. And I'll hit this little star up here, it'll be added to my favorites. And if I navigate, tab over to favorites, there it's there. And get to this folder. Uh, this option here will is a toggle to allow you to view folders as media volumes, which can be useful in some circumstances. And this here is your file path, which is particularly useful for actually pasting in um, file paths. Like I've managed to do this, it's really useful in Windows because it's quite similar actually to how uh, Windows Explorer works. You can just tap in here and paste the file path and on you go. Um, I suppose I'll quickly demonstrate that. So if I go to Finder, I'll go, say, into, into here. And then I'll bring it up. There's the file path there. And this is just space for some XMLs. And if I copy that file path into here and hit enter, it'll jump to that file path. So it can be very useful for scripting workflows and stuff like that. And this is probably most useful if you have the folder open in the finder um, and you want to jump to it, you can use this method as well. Your main browser around here, you can switch between a um, frame view and a text view. Um, down here we can switch between linking and importing as what we're going to do. And then we've got a few options over here as well. So if we double click, um, we can choose whether that links or imports, you know, depending on your setting over here, the, the clip in question or if it loads the clip into the source monitor. So you can actually load clips directly into your source monitor to preview using this um, window without actually even them bringing them into the project. So you just want to quickly play the clip or take a look at it, uh, which is quite a useful feature. Um, we can set it to close the source browser as soon as we're finished linking or importing. If you know you're only ever going to be opening this to import and then you want to get rid of it, that's a useful thing to have ticked. And we can clear the source monitor upon closing. So that's something that I'll do. So it'll sort of reset uh, where you were. Um, as soon as you close it, you can leave that unticked and then it'll remember and go back to where you were next time you open it. Up to you. And then there's another very useful function down here, target bin. So this is where it's going to import the media. So you can set it to create a new bin and dump the files in there. So it'll just be a, a named after your project, the usual sort of standard naming. Um, AMA link test, so by default I think it just chooses the current bin you have open, you know if you have a bin open when you launch this, so that's what it's done. Or you can actually have it create a bin based on a folder. Um, so I could so select a folder with a whole bunch of clips, tell it to link in the clips, um, and it will create a new bin, name it after that folder and link in all the clips. So we do have some more options there. And this is a lot more options than we used to have in Avid, especially for importing. You know, the old import window is still there. If I just go to import media, it'll just bring up like an OS window um, and to go and find your media and then you hit import. But we don't get nearly as many options. So source browser is a massive improvement. But that's enough about uh, the source browser. So let's uh, let's get to some linking. Eh? <coughs> So for my linking, I will use this footage from a short film that I worked on. And here I am in the visual um, picture folder for that shoot day. So when we're in text view here in the source browser, we got a whole load of information. So we can see the raster dimension, the color space, frame rate, time codes. Um, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like an avid bin basically. We can choose columns, we can hide columns. We can look at everything we're previewing. Um, so a couple of things to note. So I'm just going to filter this by file type. And then all the stuff that we get the extra info for over here, where we've got a duration and we've got a codec, that's the stuff we can link it. So there's all our picture. So I can select that and I could hit link to bring it in. But before I continue on, I just want to point out one thing, one crucial, crucial detail to do with linking. And that is the plugin column. So um, Avid by default does come with support for a lot of different codecs for importing and working with. Um, 
but there are some uh, camera formats that you're going to have to download the manufacturer's AMA plugin for Avid in order to link to. Now, these plugins are generally always free, although they're downloaded from the manufacturer's site, quite often on Avid's site there are links to where you can find all of these plugins. So, for example, linking in red raw footage, there's a separate plugin for that. Um, now, by default, Avid should auto-detect the correct plugin to use, as it has done here. Um, but if in the off chance it hasn't, all you have to do is over here, right-click, and then move to link with, and then you can select the correct plugin. So yeah, that's just something to be aware of. If you go to link to a source camera file and it won't link, just go to Avid's page, see if there's an AMA plugin for it. So before I hit link here, I'm also just going to click on this little cog wheel over here and show you a couple of things. Um, this is where you'll find your link settings. Um, and if you have import ticked as your method here, and you hit the cog wheel, you'll get to your import settings. So I don't tend to really make any changes here, um, but again, I don't do a lot of linking. I generally always work with transcoded material, um, but uh, I'll always make sure that automatically link to volumes is unticked, which is the default now, I believe. By default, it used to be enabled, and then as soon as you plugged in a drive to the Avid, it would automatically link to it and bring in all of the clips as the AMA linked anything that was on that drive. It was really annoying. But one thing that is quite useful here under your link settings, if you click this button here, you, it will take you straight to the AMA plugins page on Avid's website. So although I'll still have it linked below as promised, um, that's, that's a quicker way to find it because uh, that'll always be there. And then you can jump straight to the page at Avid and look for your, your desired plugin. Uh, link options, this is a very similar to options that are under your import settings, you know, in terms of multi-channel audio and how to deal with alpha channels and stuff like that. Uh, live link is something I haven't had a lot of success with, but again, I don't do a lot of linking. This option is supposed to enable you so that when you link to a clip outside of Avid, um, Avid's live checking it. So say you're working with it on your timeline, say it's something like a, like a visual effects clip. And then your VFX artist you know, overwrites that same clip um, with an updated version, but with the exact same file name and start time code. In theory, if a live link is enabled, um, Avid should see the change and it'll be recognized with a media composer. But I've not had a lot of luck with this and it's something that I could do more of a deep dive into later on. But for the purposes of this Assistant Essentials course, it's, it's really not needed. Uh, link sequentially numbered Im images as image sequences. Um, yep, so if you're bringing in an image sequence, you're going to need that ticked. Same as import. And properties of new clips. Reformatting option. I always want the default to be pillar box, letter box. I don't know why it's stretched. And for... AIS metadata, um, real name for Labro. So for the Labro column, I would love for this to work. Uh, so it's basically similar to what I've mentioned in my uh, Resolve video of making trans Avid transcodes in Resolve, where you can set the metadata to automatically populate the tape name with the source file name. But in this case, it will be um, the Labro column, but it will work just the same way. But I found that this doesn't necessarily work. When we link in this these clips, we'll see if it does. Um, and if it does, great. Um, uh, this is the frame count column. I'll have that set to start at 1. I don't know why the default start at 0. It doesn't really make any sense to me. Converted time code to frames could be useful as well in some instances. I've used that in animation workflows. And time code for start column. Generally, you're going to want the embedded uh, time code that's already there. But from file name, I have found useful, and again, in animation workflows sometimes as well. So <clears throat> that's a quick overview. But as I said at the start, you're not going to need to look into these link settings too much. I wouldn't think, again, it probably depends on what it is that you're doing. But for, you know, long form drama, I rarely ever do linking, just now and then. And even when I do, I haven't had to bother with this stuff too much. So I'm going to hit OK there, and then... Select my files again and hit link. I look behind me, the files have been linked in my bin.
that is us successfully having linked in clips. Yeah! Uh, we can see, we can preview them all there. We can play them down. There's no audio, no guide audio on the source clips and we haven't synced yet. But it is all there and we have information saved of the source video codec and the plugin. So, in a very basic sense, that's how you'll link in clips. Right, now let's take a look at option number two. So, I'll give you a brief explanation. Um, I did mention before how I would uh, break this down into three subcategories. Um, so I'll give you an explanation of what they are first, then we'll get into showing you some stuff. The three subcategories I break this down into are uh, importing material. So w when you're doing a straight import, you're telling Avid essentially to, to bring it in and re-encode it into whatever format that you've set. Um, so sort of like linking and then transcoding, but just in one step. Um, you have consolidating, which would require a link first and then consolidating. And you would do this if um, you're this, the material you're bringing in is already kind of Avid friendly. So, you know, if you're linking to ProRes material or DNX material, you could then just tell Avid to consolidate it to your desired drive and it will rewrap the material into an MXF, but it doesn't have to re-encode it necessarily. So it's a lot faster than transcoding. And then our last one is transcodes. So if we're doing these transcodes in Avid, then we'll be selecting them here um, after AMA linking and going consolidate transcodes and we'll make our transcodes here. We'll take a look at this in a minute. Um, or as is far more common, especially in, you know, bigger budget stuff, um, you know, the transcodes will be done by a DIT department um, and they'll be done in Resolve. And so you'll be given a drive with transcodes on it and you'll need to bring those into Avid. So um, I'll show you how, how we'll go about a few of those different methods. Um, I'll demonstrate them and yeah, we can have more of a look. So first off, I'll just uh, do a really quick overview of importing. As a method of ingesting, it's kind of been depreciated. It's um, so it's not used a hell of a lot anymore. Um, but I'll just do a quick demonstration for you anyway. So if I'm in my source browser, it'll just be finding what you want to import, making sure that you're on import and then hitting import and it'll just do it and bring it in. Um, no, what's a What's a smaller one of these? And so there you go. I've hit import and it says transcoding converting one of nine. Um, so, but it says one clips. So the one of nine, it means there's nine channels. I'm assuming that there's like eight channels of audio on there and one channel of video and that's what it's doing. And then we have our clip here. Just close the source browser. We have our imported clip. So you can bring material in that way, but if you're going to relink to it later, I I generally wouldn't. I, I don't I don't particularly like importing um, because I, I feel like it does too much for you, and I've got less control. Um, and you know, and whatever software tries to do stuff for me, I don't really like it. Um, so our next one to take a quick look at, um, I'll just uh, do a quick talk on consolidating. So say if I was to go to I've got some array test footage here from an array camera, which I believe is ProRes. So if I link to this, then we can right click on any of these. I'll just do one clip to show and do a consolidate transcode. Um, so our consolidate and our transcode options are in this one window here. So still under consolidate, I'll select the drive I want it to go to. You could set it to delete the original media files when you're done, if you like. <clears throat> we can set it to consolidate only media that's linked, which, you know, may be advised. And we have our tip boxes for, um, for our audio. So we can convert the audio on the way in, or we can leave it in the format that it is. Um, now, converting your audio can be a good idea, just so that all of your uniform is conformed to, you know, the same bit depth and sample rate. Um, keeps Avid happy. But since this is picture, and I won't really be using any of this in from on my timeline, I won't bother. So, uh, with all that, um, happy, yep, 
Hit me consolidate. And then it says, do you want to have the native master clips? So that's the master clips in Avid, like the master clips that you click on. Do you want to keep them linked to the original clips? Or do you want to relink your master clips to the, the new ones you're making? Um, now, this is kind of a good step here. And I applaud Avid for putting it in. Because what it's going to do is, if you keep a, the media linked to the original, but you make the new consolidated ones, then your new consolidated clips have a suffix on the end of dot .new, uh, so dot .new.01, dot dot .new.02, dot depending how many you're doing. Um, and if you do it the other way around, so you want it to relink as you make these um, new consolidated clips, um, if you want to relink to those ones, which you're most likely going to do, otherwise why are you consolidating, um, then it'll do the opposite. So it'll rename your initial LinkedIn clips to dot .old. Um, which is quite useful, so I'll hit OK. Consolidating. Um, so it's not doing any re-encoding or converting. It's just copying the file into your Avid Media files and rewrapping it in an MXF container. Um, so very, very non-destructive and relatively fast. So if your media is shot in ProRes, you know, as long as it's not a massive like ProRes 444 or 444XQ, um, then, you know, by all means, consolidate in um, and just work with that. And we can see now we have our consolidated clip here and we have our linked clip here. And as promised, it's renamed it .old.01. And that sort of sums up uh, consolidating, bringing in media that way. Now, that brings us to transcodes, which would be the most common way of having a DNX and an Avid friendly codex in the Avid Media Files folder in, in Avid is, is doing transcodes. So a uh, couple of ways that you'll do this, um, as has been alluded to and talked about in other videos, uh, first one being is making your transcodes in Avid. So well, we've got AMA clips here, we'll talk about that. So first off, you just select the ones you want to transcode. You can right click, consolidate transcode again, and just switch this up here to transcode. Then we have our options here. Um, so first off, we can set it to transcode only linked media. This is particularly useful if, say, you've got a sequence with, you know, mixed media stuff in there, and you want it all to be transcoded, but you don't want to transcode the whole timeline. Uh, so you can do a consolidate transcode on your sequence and have that ticked and it's only going to transcode what's linked. But for the purposes of what we're doing, we know what we want to transcode, we want to transcode what was selected. So we we'll select that, selected our drive, go to transcode, raster dimensions. Um, this is where you, we have a few options in terms of uh, the resolution that we transcode to. So. Uh, project dimensions uh, is going to sort of reformat clips to to the resolution of the project. So if your project is 1920 by 1080, it's going to conform all the clips to that. Uh, source dimensions will keep the resolution as as it is for each individual clip, which is what I would generally always have ticked. Um, and then source a quarter and source a sixteenth is if you are really really limited on space and you need tiny tiny clips. Um, I've only used that on one job, um, and it was because we had to, and it was a reality show, um, and we just did tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of footage. Um, so it made sense in that particular respect. So I'm going to hit source dimensions. This frame rate, so you can have this ticked if you happen to know that your source's frame rate is already the frame rate that you want. Um, in fact, it's I think it's generally a good idea to have this uh, so that you can maintain time code in the correct frame rate. You can do the conversions with time effects in Avid later. But if you want the conversion and conform done on the way in, you can do a convert to projects frame rate and Avid will do a retime to your projects frame rate. Uh, your video resolution. So this is the codec that we want to transcode to. We have a whole number of options here. If you're transcoding in Avid though, it makes sense to use one of Avid's codecs, that's DNX HR. Um, I did um, talk about in the previous chapter um, and listed all the different variants of DNX um, up to HQX, I think. Uh, there is also uncompressed formats as well that are just crazy high quality. 
But for transcode, for the purposes of proxies, you want these to be smaller. So I would always use either DNxHRLB or SQ. Um, so LB is low bitrate and is generally speaking fine for most purposes. Um, but SQ I'll sometimes go to if I have the the storage space and you know a decent machine I'm working on. Um, then I'll then I'll like to use SQ. But generally speaking, LB is perfectly fine. Um, so I'll leave it at LB just now. Link source scaling. I always keep this to full because um, um, you know I don't want to do any scaling down in terms of the quality. Um, apply source transformations. So this is something I'm going to talk about a bit later at the end. So, but basically the principle of what it's asking here is if you had applied any LUTs or you had done any reframes or adjusted the image in any way after you'd linked it in, then if you have these ticked, it can, you know, bake those changes in on the transcode, um, uh, which would be advisable, um, particularly if you're applying LUTs um, and stuff like that to your footage each day as you come in. Because um, otherwise, when you apply the LUTs just in source settings to your transcodes or something like that, Avid is live applying it all the time. So you're using some element of processing power to do that, whereas if it's baked into the image, you're not. And then we also have our same, you know, convert audio sample rates, you know, a bit depth down here that we had before. Um, and our audio wrapper, we're always going to want as PCM, because um, that's our main Avid. Uh, format for audio and video, uh, Avid OP Atom, PCM. Um, now something I didn't mention during Consolidate, um, but it is available for consolidating as well, is down here for processing options. We have three, the bottom one's greyed out for me because I'm on a standard Media Composer license, um, just slumming it with the standard. I'll break down these three options. So application means that uh, it's going to lock up the application while it's transcoding, it's going to use the full power of any of the computer resources that are available. So it'll use the full power of the CPU, the RAM, like whatever it can get its hands on to do the transcode. If you do a background process, it will transcode everything in the background while you continue to work. Now, of course, it's not going to be using the full resources of the machine while it does that, um, because you still need some to, you know, do whatever else you're doing in Avid. But if you don't need this done immediately, then by all means, do a background process and you can continue doing other things. And distributed processing, the last one is kind of an interesting one, um, where if you have an Avid Ultimate license and you have other machines kind of lying about your house or, or if you're in a facility, um, but if you have, you know, older machines, um, you can create your own little, basically render farm, um, or any machines that are connected to your network, you can set them up with distributed processing. And then it can offload tasks like this to the other machines to transcode or stuff like that, you know, while you continue to work. It's it's a good feature that I haven't had the opportunity to try, but we'll see. Maybe later on down the line, I'll spring for an ultimate license and I'll get to try that out. Um, but for now, I'm just going to hit application and I'm going to just do one of these. And then I'll bring up. CPU usage, you can see it's kind of using a lot of it. Um, so it's transcoding away and it will do it fairly fast, um, especially on the newer AVIDs. It utilizes, you know, as AVID is much more dependent on the CPU rather than the GPU. Um, and so it's going to use your CPU for this, um, you know, so if you've got a high clock speed, you know, multi-core CPU, you know, this shouldn't take too long. Right, so as we can see, that's our transcode done. Um, don't need a CPU usage monitor here anymore. Um, but we can see over here, under video codec, our EMA ones are this XAVC, that was the shooting codec. And here we have DNxLB. So that is a transcoded clip. So that is, you know, the nuts and bolts of how you would ingest all of these media and like the different methods. Um, Righty-ho everybody, so that is part one of ingesting. 
thank you very much for sticking with me through that. I know I can really ramble on. Trust me, it could have been a lot longer. But hopefully you did learn something. Hopefully you got something out of my rambling. If you did, then you might feel like coming back for part two, which will be dropping next week. You know, covering applying metadata immediately after ingest. Um, we'll be talking about applying LUTs, um, you know, importing audio, importing stills. Um, some things to know around that. So yeah, all that will be coming next Thursday, 4 p.m. British time. Oh, and if you haven't already, please, please do like, subscribe, hit the bell. Because if you don't, it is just me, you know, talking to myself for hours on end and then listening to myself, talking to myself for hours on end while I edit it. And it's, yeah, yeah that, that's not good for anyone.